Hi everybody and welcome to Magoosh SQL Bootcamp. This is lesson number one, what is SQL? Ever since the dawn of mankind, people had the need to store and record data in all sorts of databases. But it was only in the 1950s and 60s where digital media such as punched cards, magnetic tapes, and the early hard drives by the way, the hard drive that you see at the bottom right is uh, an IBM whooping five gigabyte hard, hard drive back in the 1960s. But, you know, as ridiculous as it seems uh, to us today, this is what got us to uh, modern hard disks and eventually to um, the solid state drives that we use today. However, the challenges that we face today, today are still rooted back in the days of punch cards and magnetic tapes. And I will explain that later. So, um, even before digital, digital age, data was always stored and accessed based on physical location. So books had page numbers, which were physical locator to the page. Libraries had indexes which told you in which row, which column, which shelf uh, your books were located. Again, physical location. File cabinets, punched cards had a physical order. Believe me, if you have ever dropped a bunch of punched cards on the floor, you would feel the physical impact of that. Uh, magnetic tapes had to wind and rewind until they got to a specific location, a specific address pointer. And as long as uh, data uh, sizes and the require were small and the requirements really weren't that high, um, things worked out pretty well. Um, we used to store the data in what we call flat files, which had several flavors to them. The most common one was known as CSV or comma separated values. You can see an example of the yellow print on the slide of a CSV file, which records orders of people back in the 1960s. And as I mentioned, the challenges didn't really become apparent until um, the data sizes started to grow and their requirements started to pile. And there are many challenges to flat files, just to name a few. Um, the fact that you have to access it sequentially, so getting to row number four is not a big deal, getting to row number four million is probably a bigger deal. Nothing in here enforces or guarantees any kind of data consistency. I can put names that don't exist. I can put strings instead of dates. I can put negative prices. I can put items that never existed, etc. Nothing guarantees data consistency. And when there is a gap that big for inconsistencies to creep in, they always do. Update anomalies is another challenge. So what happens if now I need to change the name of Ami um, to some other name? And it's it appears 100 times in the document, but I only update it in 99 places instead of 100. Now, good luck starting to find out who this Ami is, where, what, what orders did he make, etc., etc. These challenges were met by one person, quite a character in his own right, Dr. Edgar F. Codd. You might want to read a little bit more about him. But he realized that, you know, this storing large amounts of data in flat files isn't just going to work. And he had solid mathematical background, and he came up with the relational model, which was his solution to data management at scale. He worked on it for several years and then published a paper internally at IBM first, and a year later that paper became public. However, IBM was really slow to follow. They only started developing their first relational database um, a few years later. And due to all sorts of reasons, Cod himself was a little bit distant from the project and the developers didn't fully understand what 
what, what the relational model was really about, and they developed a non-relational language to support it, which they called SQL, S-E-Q-U-E-L, or Structured English Query Language. And once the product became uh, public, it was still in prototype mode and IBM was quite slow working on it, but the competitors quickly realized the value of this. One of the first people to do that was Larry Allison of Oracle. And um, SQL started becoming a thing. The market started demanding. The benefits were becoming obvious. You, all, you can enforce data consistency. You can get much better performance. Funnily enough, the name SQL didn't remain for long due to trademark issues with a UK-based aircraft company. SQL had to be renamed to SQL. And this is how SQL came to be. The relational model, which developed by COD, is a declarative method for specifying data in queries. It is founded on three mathematical notions. The first one is set theory, which deals with collections of objects instead of individual objects. Um, first order predicate logic, which is used in many disciplines and now in computer science as well. Um, you will see um, how it works when you start writing queries ac across multiple uh, tables and using those predicates. But just to give you an example, so in the more common propositional logic, I can state a fact like the book is blue, which will be very intuitive. In first order predicate logic, the same fact will be um, stated a little differently. I will say there exists something that something in X, in a way that that something is a book, and that something which is a book is blue. And by that, I took the variable, and you can see the power, because now I can use the same statement, just replace the variable, and come up with um, different predicates. Relational algebra, which was used for the modeling, the tables, the databases, and the queries, were developed by COD, and it's a very interesting mathematical branch. You might want to read more about it if you're a mathematics fan. The two main concepts in the relational model are relations and tuple. Now, you might be familiar with tuple from other programming languages. It's just a sequence of elements. And you can see at the bottom here um, the same data that we took from the flat file. And to make it a relation, what we did is we took every set of corresponding elements and made it member of a data domain. So for example, the green data domain, which is the customer name, and now once I said that these are all one domain, I can start enforcing rules on them. For example, saying that it can only have um, alpha, alpha alphabetic characters, no numerals. Date, on the other hand, can only have numerals and um, special characters like slash. And it has to be in the range from whenever my business started to the current day. You get the idea, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another term you want to be familiar with because you're going to hear it often, and it's actually often very abused, is normalization or normal form. COD, and later with, in conjunction with other people, came up with a set of rules that help you evaluate your model and how it conforms to the relational model or how truly relational it is. Um, in most cases, if you design your database correctly, your model to begin with, um, it's going to be normalized or it's going to be conforming to high normal forms to begin with. But for the less experienced people, it's a very valuable tool to go back and check your model and make sure that it is um, relationally correct and that will support the, um, the causes that Codd described as why he formed these normalization rules. So SQL tables. SQL tables um, are 
an approximation to the relational model. They're not really truly relational because they allow things like duplicate rows, null values. Um, they are not physical, uh, physically independent from the underlying um, storage as we would like them to be, but they are close enough. So if we take the same data that we saw before, and now we put it in a SQL table, you can see that the name that we give the table, the definition of the table, is the predicate variable. There exists order. There exists a book, right? Um, every row is a tuple, and all the rows together form the relation. All the constraints and the queries we apply on this are the predicates. So even though SQL started um, as from the market and became popular really quickly and the need to standardize it um, was obvious. The first standard um, was published in 1986 and up until last year there were nine generations of SQL standards that were published. The most recent one adding cutting edge technologies like pattern recognition, JSON, uh, and many others. So by no means is SQL an archaic, la archaic language. It's actually evolving and uh, you know up to date with the latest technologies. Every vendor that creates a database management system that uses SQL can choose to comply with the SQL standard on three levels. Entry, which means only a very basic set of commands are compatible, intermediate, and full. Most vendors will have an entry level conformity level, and each vendor will have its own extensions to form a specific SQL dialect. So Microsoft's dialects called T-SQL or Transact SQL, Oracle is called PL-SQL, or uh, procedural language SQL, Postgres has its own dialect of PL SQL, et cetera, et cetera. But the good news is that most of the basic querying that you do is going to be very, very similar, if not identical, between the these different engines, engines and porting is going to be really easy. So let's do a quick review. What did we learn today? Um, we saw why uh, digital data access started as sequential and even before that and mindset that still lingers on data was stored in flat files which didn't scale once data sizes started to grow cod came up with a solution which he called a relational model to solve these data management problem and although sql is not truly relational it is a good enough implementation to handle relational models and that every vendor has its own SQL dialect with some level of conformity to the SQL standard. In the next, in the next lesson, we're going to see the SQL language basics, data definition language, data control language, and from that point on, we're going to focus solely on data manipulation language. So until the next lesson, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.